the top story of this hour, Ethiopia accuses Egypt and Sudan of deliberately politicizing the issue of the GER to perplex the world. Um, being their coffee company, South Africa sources from small-scale farmers eliminating a middleman. Welcome to our Disney News Harlem, Solomon Daniel, thanks for joining me. Foreign Affairs Spokesperson and Public Diplomacy Director General Ambassador Dina Saad attempts by Egypt and the Sudan to portray the GERD to the international community as a threat is disregarding and politicizing the matter. Ambassador Dina also underlined that Ethiopia is still in good faith to solve the dispute peacefully through diplomacy. Kassan Jani reports. The spokesperson and public diplomacy director general of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Ethiopia, Ambassador Dina Mufti, has given the ministry's bi weekly press briefing. In his presentation, the ambassador focused on political diplomacy with a focus on situations regarding the Grand Ethiopian Rings and Sudan negotiations, the Ethiopian Sudan border dispute, economic diplomacy, capacity building, and citizen centered diplomatic activities. Ambassador Dina recalled that last week's talks bill on the three countries' negotiators heading to the Democratic Republic of Congo ended in disagreement, stating Ethiopia had gone to Kinshasa for the talks to ensure that Africa's problems by Africans through diplomacy. The trilateral negotiations that have taken place in uh, Kinshasa under the auspices of the African Union, particularly the chairmanship of the DRC, uh, unfortunately, that uh, could not succeed because of the differences of the agendas. Uh, we at the, our delegation, Ethiopian delegation, has highlighted the need for uh, continuing the African process, the African-led process, because we believe in the African capacity of solving its own problems. Though the other side, other negotiators, uh, we're not very much interested in the success of this process. We, can, we are saying they are not interested in the success of the process because we can cite cases whereby they have uh, drained the African uh, leadership. Ambassador Dina said the text of Egypt and the Sudan who claimed the Grand Ethiopian Rings and Sudan as a three to foreign bodies was unnecessary and it was politicizing the matter, underlining that Ethiopia is always ready in good faith to solve the dispute in a peaceful manner. When Egypt was the chairmanship of the, uh, the chairman of the AU, they have taken this agenda to the United States unnecessarily. This is a disregard to the African Union. After the South Africans uh, assumed the chairmanship, they have boycotted negotiations close to seven times. And now they have con 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 continued as the same instance, and uh, we really uh, are not happy with these instances. And uh, we are committed to this negotiation should continue, and this negotiation should be led by the Africans, and uh, Ethiopia is really committed to it. Dean also stressed that cooperation and a spirit of African Brotherhood are the best options for the management and utilization of the waters of the Nile. Uh, the decade-long negotiation of the GERD finds itself in a deadlock. Egypt and the Sudan seem to be demanding a binding agreement before the operation of the Megadam. This comes at the construction of what it thought to be Africa's biggest dam is in an advanced stage. Meanwhile, Ethiopia has disclosed its unwavering stance on the issue of binding agreement. The following report by Gosh Melissa takes us through the latest evidence regarding it. Since the very inception of the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam, Egypt was restless to thwart its construction. 
Despite Egypt's concerns about its share of Nile waters, Ethiopia has made it clear that it will stick to the principle of no significant harm as well as a win-win solution. Ever insistent on thwarting the construction of the dam by any means, Egypt said on Tuesday that it has sent letters to the UN Security Council, UN Security Council chief and the president of the UN General Assembly explaining all the latest developments and stages of negotiations. Ethiopia has stressed the necessity of an African-led solution to reach a win-win outcome. It has emphasized that the most practical and workable way for a successful negotiation is first to agree on the first filling and relative operations and then to proceed to a comprehensive agreement on the utilization of the waters of the Nile. This, Ethiopia says, is in line with the communique issued by the African Union Bureau of the Assembly in July 2020. Egypt has been saying the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam will collapse due to the unfavorable geology, but the dam is still erected and progressing well. Recently, Egypt's self-made water professor is propagating the usual false propaganda here that a 50% of chance that the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam will collapse. But the case is far from the truth that Egypt has used the false propaganda as a weapon. The international water experts assured that the GERD has no such threats. Last week, Egypt's President Sisi was bragging that no one can take a single drop of water. Addis Ababa rejected a Sudanese proposal backed by Egypt to form an international quartet mediation made up of the African Union, the United Nations, the European Union and the U.S. Ethiopia plans to move forward with the second filling of the dam set to take place in July despite objections of Egypt and Sudan over the execution of such a move in the absence of a legally binding deal. The second filling aims at collecting around 18.4 billion cubic meters of the Blue Nile water, up from 4.9 billion cubic meters secured during the first filling last year. Egypt's President Abdel Fattah el-Sisi called on Ethiopia last week not to compromise Cairo's share of Nile water, saying all options are possible. Ethiopia stands in favor of an African solution has been supported by Russia's Foreign Secretary Sergei Lavrov. If all the three countries come together, the other countries need to set up the right environment for this. Meanwhile, the Kenyan printing media, The Standard, said the Sudan and Egypt must stop beating drums of war over Nile Dam project. The newspaper wrote that neither Egypt nor the Sudan can claim absolute possession of the Nile water. The Federal Supreme Court established 26 election tribunals to receive complaints and appeals regarding the upcoming sixth general election Ethiopia is about to hold. In an exclusive interview with the TV, President of the Federal Supreme Court, Maza Shenafi, said establishing election tribunals is found imperative to ensure election integrity. We've more on the story. None of the previous five elections in Ethiopia were free from disputes and controversies. Courts fell short to properly handle election disputes and they were overwhelmed by complaints and appeals following the conduct of the elections. Absence of separate election tribunals was one of the major contributing factors for the appeals not to be addressed properly. Learning from past mistakes, the Federal Supreme Court established 26 election tribunals to receive complaints and appeals regarding the six general elections the country is set to hold in a few weeks' time. We have established 11 election tribunals that consist of one judge each under the federal first instant court, 10 tribunals that consist of three judges each under the federal high court and close to five tribunals under the federal supreme court. Judges who are assigned to see cases in these tribunals have received special training pertaining to election-related disputes. We really care about the decisions that are going to be made. Our judges need to prepare themselves to pass accurate verdicts based on knowledge and international practices. According to the president, these tribunals have already started to see complaints so far. 
መጀመሪያ ድርጅት ፈቅድ በጣና ጊዜ ነው የምጣው እስካሁን የምጣገር ተያዘ We have so far received one complaint regarding election in our first instance court and close to 10 cases in the Federal High Court. Most of the complaints are about election registration. The National Electoral Board of Ethiopia denied them registration based on its own rules and regulations. The court already gave verdict on eight of them, and the Supreme Court is looking into a few appeals following the decision of the High Court. So we are not challenged so far. Mars underscored the need to build trust about the court she is leading and urged all actors of the election to discharge their responsibilities so as to minimize disputes. Competing political parties started a much-anticipated media debate yesterday. Five parties debated on the issue of rule of law and democratization on the first day. Organized by the electoral desk of the Ethiopian Broadcasting Corporation, The event brought together the ruling Prosperity Party, the Ethiopian Citizens for Social Justice Izema, the National Movement of the Amhara Nama, the Ethiopian People's Revolutionary Party EPRP, and the Freedom and Equality Party. The first such event to be organized this year ahead of the polls in June, the debate will continue on selected topics like foreign policy, security, macroeconomy, and the land issues. surrounded by a wall with five of the original gates that are kept shut from dusk to dawn. Welcome back. You're watching Adi's News Hour. World Health Organization Regional Director for Africa, Dr. Matsihidiso Moti, commended Ethiopia's commitment to promote universal health coverage, UHC. Dr. Matsihidiso Moti, WHO Regional Director for Africa, met with President Salok Zelde and discussed various issues, including activities underway to promote universal health coverage in Ethiopia. 
A regional, regional director, director further appreciated Ethiopia's continued partnership with WHO to promote UHC despite the disruption caused by the COVID-19 pandemic. The World Health Organization has inaugurated a national and regional emergency medical team training center in Addis Ababa. And in business, Ethiopian Consulate General in Chongqing, China, took part in the Chongqing Urban Tourism Festival and Intercity Tourism Trade Fair. Ethiopia's coffee accompanied with a special ceremony was on display. Unique tourism destinations of Ethiopia were also promoted during the ceremony. Meanwhile, the Consulate General of Ethiopia in Los Angeles, in collaboration with the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Ethiopia, and other stakeholders hosted a virtual trade and tourism promotion forum on Thursday to strengthen tourism and business ties between Ethiopia and the United States of America. In Chongqing could be cited. We have also received delegations from Romania, delegation of investors uh, who have shown an interest in investing in Ethiopia. That has been organized by our consulate in Romania. Um, our Consulate General in Los Angeles also has made a virtual promotion of tourism and business in Ethiopia. The virtual promotion made a successful deliberation on trade and tourism opportunities available in Ethiopia. With regard to economic diplomacy, our consulate offices and the embassies abroad have been undertaking various virtual economic activities by promoting trade, investment, and uh, business opportunities in Ethiopia. In this uh, promotion, about 102 trade and tourism representatives have taken part. In the, in the Kalahari, Kalahari Desert, Desert in, in South, South Africa. Africa. I'm, I'm actually, actually in the, the Kalagadi Frontier, Frontier Park, Park, which is in a remote, remote part of Northern Cape. Cape. It's, it's about, about as far uh, into, into South, South Africa, Africa as you get. get. We're bordered on, on one side, side by, by Botswana, Botswana and, on and on the other side by Namibia. Namibia. This, this is, is the most beautiful, beautiful region. region. It, it is, is everything, everything you expect a desert to be, but with African animals. And we've seen a hell of a lot. We've seen lions, we've seen giraffe, we've seen an abundance of springbok and oryx. Today I've been and I have visited a Bushman's village. The Bushmen were there in their, in their native dress explaining 
their way, way of life with us. And, and I, I can, can tell you, it's a quite a frugal way of life. And their lifestyle may be simple, but it seems to be that they're very, very happy people. Then now, now we are back in our place where we was Bushman. This is Auntie's News Hour. Ismail Ahmed is a migrant from Somaliland who is on a mission to give back to a country literally shunned by global powers. Somaliland has a growing number of tech hubs. Ismail Ahmed founded the now famed money transfer company World Remit, and this Horn of African nation was its first market. Today, Somaliland's mobile tech infrastructure is considered as one of the best on the continent, and the World Remit founder is poised to have a huge impact on Somali landers. Ahmed has pledged to commit 50% of his wealth and investments in the next 10 years to fund development programs in Somaliland. I think I'm in a fortunate position to say over the next 10 years, my ambition is to commit as much as $500 million so far, what I intend to make from uh, World Remit. And it's a continuation of that culture of uh, kind of self-help, uh, you know, wealth sharing. The focus of this would be, as I said, on education, particularly literacy uh, and health. Literacy is key to improve productivity and poverty reduction empowerment of women and enhance political participation. And finally, being their coffee company in South Africa says it is directly sourcing coffee beans from cooperatives of small scale farmers eliminating middle men. Emmanuel Jorgesmo from Africa News. Inspired by an idea from a friend in Canada, Jonathan set out on a fair trade coffee movement in Africa. But after 16 years of trading, what does fair trade mean today? We have worked with the same farmers in the same regions because we pay the best. Um, and that's probably it. If another roaster comes along and offers them more money, um, they should, and I would encourage them to take it if we can't do it. Being there, coffee, coffee company sources from cooperatives of small-scale farmers eliminating middlemen. From Ethiopia, Kenya, the Democratic Republic of Congo to Burundi and Tanzania, they source from only one high-quality region per country and sell at a premium. You know, when we've had investors look at our business before, they've often said, Jonathan, one of your problems in your business is that you pay too much for coffee. Um, and I said, obviously, I mean, that's why we're in business, you know. Um, I believe in uh, that's, uh, you know, uh, if we're going to change things, we need to put our, put our necks out um, and say that this product is worth more than we were currently paying. Being their coffee has already exported small amount of their coffee to the US, UK and Europe, but the COVID-19 pandemic has slowed things down. Despite the COVID snag, Jonathan believes in the growth of the product. He thinks that with the growth in the coffee market and the growth in the specialty coffee market, a worldwide trend to understanding that African coffee is best on the planet. A quick reminder of our top stories. Ethiopia accuses Egypt and Sudan of deliberately politicizing the issue of the GERD to perplex the world. And being their coffee company, South Africa sources from small scale farmers eliminating middlemen. Well, that's it for the news for Mr. Mondanya and the rest of the English team here in the studio. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.